thanks for having me here. My name is Eric, and I'm one of the co-founders of Mixbook.com. And I'm going to go over 10 important things when starting a tech company. Some things have kind of been, you know, iterated earlier, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and give some examples and um, maybe give a different perspective on it. So um, without further ado, let's get started. So real quick about me, uh, again, co-founder of Mixbook, we have three brands, Mixbook.com, MontageBook.com, and Mosaic, which is a mobile app for iPhone and Android. And, um, and that's just it about me. So first things first, number one, prioritize. And I actually put it as number one as a priority. So uh, there's always so many things to do in startups. You only have so little time. You only have so much runway. Make sure to prioritize. But the, you know, the catch is that it's not just about you, know, you stack rank everything, and you have your top three or four things that you're trying to do, whether it's like you're trying to launch this MVP, and you feel like there's a couple of important things that you need to do uh, for that product. And the number one thing might only be a little bit better than the number two thing. And this is the part where you have to kind of lead your team and get them behind you to go ahead and do it. So you might be like 51% sure that number one is actually number one, but everybody else thinks that number two is actually 51% what should actually be done. And so you have to get past that. So next thing, uh, there is no spoon. Well, what I mean by that is don't take anything uh, at face value when you're starting your company. You're going to negotiate contracts. You're going to sign term sheets. They're going to throw on words like standard. But you know, to me, standard just means it's been around long enough that you should take a second look at it. <laughs> and uh, you definitely uh, want to take a second look at it. Be inquisitive. Really you know, ask questions. Get to the bottom of things. Don't just do things because you know, that's how it's been done, or some guy who's been in the, an entrepreneur for 20 years says, you know, accept this term because you need to take it. Next thing is network, which I know a lot of you guys here are engineers, so you're probably introverted. And you definitely want to network. But what I mean by network is not just like go out and be like, hey, 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 hey. I know you guys, hey, I have a thousand friends. I maxed out my Facebook friends list. That's not what I mean. What I mean is get to know people really well, make good relationships with them, and also foster those relationships um, throughout uh, the course of time. You know, if you uh, don't keep up with people and see what they're up to, chances are when you think you might need help four years down the line, you're like, hey, that guy I talked to four years ago might be able to help me. Well, guess what? You haven't talked to him in four years, and he may not even be in the country anymore to even help you. So just keep a good network and get to know people well, as opposed to getting to know many people. So the next thing is to buckle up, because startups take a long time. And that's actually kind of hard to do in the back of a Romanian taxi cab, as I, as I learned when I got here. But, but you definitely want to stay uh, focused on the long haul. Most startups take four to 10 years to exit. You probably have heard this. Um, very few startups are overnight successes. You know, people think Twitter was an overnight success. But you know, there was a couple years where nobody knew about Twitter. And uh, I would use it at a conference and be like, what the heck is this? And it was only until a couple years later that they really caught hold and just really grew fast. So just, make, just keep, be mentally prepared for that long road. So on that note, um, no, converse, no presentation is complete with a pretty without a pretty graph, so I've got to have one of those. So I went ahead and threw this one in. If you can see across the bottom, I know it's kind of hard. These are in months. So you know, on average, you have about like this right here. Um, in the middle, it's a pretty uniform distribution between four years and 10 years with an average of seven and a half years or seven years. So be prepared for a seven-year journey. And make sure that your team is also prepared for that and that everybody's behind you to do that. So next thing is don't let perfect outweigh done, great, good. You guys have kind of heard that expression before. But um, you know, obviously, you only have so, so much runway. Don't wait till everything is perfect. Identify those top things by prioritizing, figure out what that uh, most important thing is, um, and execute on it. And don't try, don't make sure that perfect doesn't outweigh done, because if you wait till it's perfect, you're probably going to run out of money. So next thing is location. So don't open a luxury uh, clothing store in the middle of a desert, <laughs> is one lesson. But what I mean by this really is the location of where you start your company is very important. 
uh, your customers might be there. Obviously, you have to hire there. You're going to live there. And guess what? It's going to take you four to 10 years. It might take a long time. So really, be, really know where you're starting your company. Moving a company after you've hired a ton of people is very hard to do as well. So you know, um, for example, a good example of this would be Zappos that moved their company from SF to, um, to Las Vegas, of all places, which is not known for startups. But to them, one of the most important things was customer service. And in Las Vegas, there's a lot of people who approach customer service as a career and are really, uh, really want to be great at customer uh, service and make uh, their customers happy. And that was really crucial to them. And so they actually moved their entire company to Las Vegas. Um, another example, which uh, is interesting, is you know, Mark Zuckerberg actually mentioned this before. He said, um, if he had to start a company today, or this was actually three years ago, he would have started in Boston. He felt that people in San Francisco or in the Bay Area were a little too fickle and always jumping on to the next thing um, if they felt like you know, they, didn't, you know, they gave some time to a company and they didn't take off, they jump on to the next thing. And he didn't like that. He didn't like that short-term focus. So he actually mentioned that he would have started in Boston. So next thing is to embrace change. And yes, that is a uh, toilet in a kitchen. <laughs> and um, you know, when you start your company, it's like to you guys, you're probably meeting at some coffee shop or you're remote or whatever. And if you do grow, tons of, tons of stuff's gonna change, new investors, new location. Uh, you might even change your idea a little bit, et cetera, et cetera. So really be prepared for change, be mentally ready for it, and keep going. So a quick example would be my company. We started out just, I mean, my co-founder eight years ago. And then now, we have a full team in Palo Alto with a couple other folks distributed across the country. And, um, and I'll tell you, it's very different right now. Um, and some of the things that change, obviously, is your role. Your role will change. So you have to grow with the company and um, have a good understanding early on of which direction you kind of want to grow in because CEO and CTO, when you first start, doesn't really mean that much. It means where you sign on your term sheet. CEO signs here, CTO signs there. But after that, it doesn't mean that much. But as soon as you start taking on employees, as soon as you, as soon as you launch a product, people want to get a hold of you. They need to know who to get a hold of, who's responsible for what, and you guys kind of diverge. So make sure all that stuff is clear. So next is about estimation. So this one, this thing down here says, objects in mirror are closer than they appear. Don't get eaten by a T-Rex, it's not fun. And you know, one of the rules about estimation is, especially if you're early on, if it's your first startup, you're just out of college, or even if you're starting a company after working in the industry for a while, uh, you're going to try to estimate and say, I need this much money, because I need eight months of runway. And you're going to get that money, and that's all great. But then seven months rolls around, you're like, holy crap, I still need another eight months <laughs> to finish this product. And then you're in a big trouble. And then you have to, like, raise some money at not so good terms, et cetera, et cetera, and it's just not pretty. So a good rule of thumb for estimation is take your most conservative, conservative estimate of what you think it's going to take to maybe launch your MVP or launch your product, and double it. So if you think it's going to take you a year to get that thing out on iOS App Store, make it two years, because that's closer to what it's going to be. So next thing is learning things the hard way, which this cat is about to do, is actually kind of hard, really. And what I mean by that is, when you learn things the hard way, you're, uh, you know, you're starting a company out of school, you don't have any experience, you don't know many people, uh, nobody wants to take a, sh you know, you don't have past successes to lean on, all that kind of stuff. And when you do that, that's going to come out in the way, uh, in the kind of terms you can negotiate, in the kind of people that are willing to meet you, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, Early on, that's really tough. Now, the interesting thing about that is that when you start a company, let's say, out of school, like I did, you're going to do a lot of things for the first time. You're going to see things for the first time. And you're going to get, uh, you're going to screw up a couple of times. And the interesting thing about learning things the, your, you know, the hard way is that learning it on your own dime and learning it while you're in the driver's seat, you're going to really understand those lessons. You hire somebody who's not good, you have to let them go, you're going to remember those experiences and you're not going to make that mistake again. Whereas if you join you know, a company out of school, you can look at the founders, let's say you join a small startup, 
you can look at the founders of that company and you know, kind of look what mistakes have they made. Well, they hired this guy the other day, and you know, they fired him in like three months. They waited too long to fire him. I'm not going to do that when I start a company. But it's very different when you do it yourself. So next thing is team alignment, getting everybody aligned. And what I mean by that is not just like blanket leadership, but understand what you're willing to trade off as a team. What things, um, you know, you're going to have a, a designer, let's say, if you're trying to do a mobile app, you're going to have developers, you're maybe going to have a computer vision guy to do whatever, and they're all going to, and they might have different ways of working and different ways of interacting. And especially in the early days, it's very important that there's some team cohesion, people are able to collaborate and work together. So make sure that you're very clear about what trade-offs you're willing to make, and that's usually centered, again, around the most important thing. So for example, if you're making a mobile app and there's an account settings page, and you want to make this really cool slider that when you slide it, like this other stuff just like jumps up or whatever. That's cool and all, but is that the most important thing? And should you really spend three weeks like perfecting that? Um, so really ask yourself those questions and make sure that the rest of your team understands that because maybe that designer doesn't want to actually uh, ship it unless it's like really nice and perfect. So make sure that you're all behind that. So. Those were my 10 things. That was number 10. And just to summarize real quick, I have the 10 things. Take a look at real quick. And so at this point, as, as I mentioned earlier, uh, I want to do something a little different. So one of the things that overarches all of these things um, is getting out of your comfort zone a little bit and trying something new. So whether you're moving to a new location to start your company, that's going to be uncomfortable. Whether it's nego negotiating some term sheet for the first time, that's going to be uncomfortable. So pushing yourself out of your comfort zone is going to be a common thing if you want to start a company. And in order to help you along with that, I've made a little exercise for us, um, with, along with my guitar, which will make its debut in a couple seconds. And what I wanted to do is have everybody stand up in a, in a second, and we're going to sing um, a song that you probably all know and have heard a lot. And the point of this is to step out of your comfort zone, do something a little bit uncomfortable. Because when you do that, even if you're doing something unrelated in the future, it's going to be a lot easier to do. And that's actually the basis of one of my friend's startup, where he actually gets people to get over their, their anxieties by, let's say, jumping in the middle of the street and do jumping jacks on just a random day. Because if you can do that, then you can probably get up on stage and do some other crazy stuff. So, without further ado, my friend in the back is going to bring my guitar any second here. There it is. And for all those who don't know the lyrics, we're going to sing Avicii, Wake Me Up, which has some lyrics that are, uh, let's see here. There we go. Yeah. This is a Texylvania first, guys. Everybody stand up. Join in on the fun. All right. Oh. Aha. Uh -huh. I need this too. Okay. So my mic's off. All right, everybody. So I'm going to sing and do the intro part. And uh, let's see. I'll do the intro, then we'll do the verse, and then we'll do the chorus twice, and then we'll be done and take some questions. All right? All right, here we go. Let's all do the intro.
So you guys can all join my band. You guys are awesome. All right. So question time. Let's do questions. And also, uh, my contact information is down there in case you want to send me an email, drop me a line or anything. Thank you very much, Eric. So I think you're the, like, one of the few tech entrepreneurs who can claim to have started like a 500-people choir. <laughs> so that's like, something impressive that you can add to your resume. Great. OK, so we have time for two more questions, I think. Yeah. So let's do it. If you have the mic, just raise your hand, and then you're good to ask a, a question. So I silence the crowd. <laughs> I thought like you wake up everybody again. Yeah, yeah. So, but then while we were, while we were waiting for, the, uh, for a question from the yeah, audience, sure. so what did you need to do to become one of the 30 coolest entrepreneurs? Oh, that's a great question. <laughs> um, oh, man. Work really hard. <laughs> work really, really hard. Work Working smart. Working hard is cool nowadays? Yeah. Working hard is how you make things happen. Um, you know, there's a lot of glamorous stuff, and even you know, Mark Zuckerberg will say that a lot of the stuff in the, that's shown in the movie like, just didn't happen. It's just a bunch of people coding, working hard, trying new things, iterating, and all that kind of stuff. Okay. That's, that's no questions? questions? Not even like, about my, my band or anything? <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. Then, thanks, thanks, guys. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you for having me. Much appreciated. Yeah. I think you scared everybody. You thought like if somebody asked a yeah, question, they would, like you'll pull them in your band. They're all like deer in the headlights. So, for like, yeah. Cool. Oh, all right, oh, we have guys. one question. Now we have. Oh, a we have a question. One. We have a question. Or was it the volunteering for becoming a band member? No. Go ahead. Uh, you were saying that will take around seven years. Oh, yeah. Well, based on Thank like you. the data yeah. average. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we're a young scene, let's say, and we're eager, and we right. want to get there and to make it faster. Right. And the question would be, is there a way to, to be able to make it faster? And if not, uh, are there some points and, and tips yeah. Yeah, so to that's, keep that's it a, going for That's that a good time? question. It's all trade-offs, right? Obviously, what does faster mean? Faster probably means you didn't build it as big as much, I mean, unless you go ahead and raise $200 million out of school, which is going to be hard. Um, so yeah, chances are that. Um, that making it faster is going to be hard, especially out of school or as your first company. And not only that, it's, not going to take you, it's probably going to take you longer if you're a first timer. So you don't have all the connections. You don't just go and hire that executive right away. You don't know who to go to. And you're doing everything for the first time. And that's actually a tax on your time that you're going to, it's, you're going to actually be, probably be towards the back of that, of that graph if you're starting it fresh without any experience. All right, and, and you were able to, to make the, the team larger, and is there a way to, to get there and to just not drop out? Yeah, we, we've seen earlier companies don't fail, just people uh, tend to drop out. Yeah, is persistency there... is key. I mean, if you have that in your background, if you finish things, if you're a finisher, you're going to be great at startups. If you kind of dabble in something and you don't quite go through with it, um, and you've done that continuously, then I would say don't jump out and take $10 million right away, because it's probably not going to turn out too well. You have to have that finisher mentality, even if it's not perfect, but finish it, launch it. You know, perfect is the enemy of gray, as they say, right? All so, right. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay.